Today we're going to be tackling a Dexter 10K hydraulic disc brake assembly. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of this video to see how much this brake job is going to cost. It's not a cheap one. You know, you can go from a $3,000 brake job to a $5,000 brake job. Just because it's in a name brand box does not mean that it's not an import part. We're going to give you some advice to save you some money. So let's get this thing torn apart and get after it. If you've ever had to take off a 16 inch wheel, especially a dually wheel, they are heavy on an oil bath axle. The biggest issue that we see when they slip this wheel off, it hits the plastic cap, cracks the plastic cap. Sometimes you don't even know it until you get on the road and you lose all of your lubrication in the hub. So I'm gonna show you a handy dandy tool that we use that we'll link in the description below. If you don't wanna spend the money on this, maybe you don't take tires off on a regular basis, I'm gonna show you the old school method that I probably use just as much uh, as this thing just because I'm used to it. Now for the tool, it will actually lift the tire off. You can dolly it back and it keeps the cap from snapping the cap off. It'll actually roll the wheel too, so you can line up the lug nuts. So it's pretty handy. Now I'm gonna show you the method that I use, that I grew up using. It's just a big pry bar. And you can work it just as effectively, you can see that. No issue, the tire is not heavy. Lots of good leverage here. Set it down and roll it out. Usually the issue with these traders and the brake failure is just a lack of maintenance, not checking the pads, pads getting into the rotor, which also will ruin the caliper. This one has been maintained over the years. It's just old. The rotor has some pretty deep cracks in it. Calipers are seized up. So this one just had lots of years of service and it's just time to put some new parts on it. So we're gonna disassemble this thing. I'm gonna spray everything with penetrating oil because it's probably not gonna wanna come apart. Before we forget, you need to locate your electric over hydraulic pump. This one is a Carlisle 1600 PSI, specifically for the disc brakes. You wanna take the cap off of it uh, because we are going to compress the pistons in the caliper so we can remove those. If you don't take that off, it could cause this cap to snap when it comes back. Um, you may lose some fluid when we push those pistons back since they are extended almost all the way out. Uh, this one will not lose any fluid because it had a leak in the brake line, so there's not much fluid left in it. So just don't forget to do that. We're going to depress the calipers so we can get the caliper off. And when we put the new brakes in it, they're gonna be thicker. This one here, we're actually putting new calipers on, but if you were just replacing the brake pads, you would need to depress them as far as you can just so there's enough clearance when you put the new pads on. This one here, we're just gonna get it loose enough to make it come out calipers loose it should come out no problem so we're going to remove the caliper bolts i've had them soaking with penetrating fluid i did like to do an all good plumbing videos when they're taking a drain loose i went ahead and loosened everything up so it looked like it was real easy keep in mind you may have a time getting these off sometimes we have to cut them off sometimes we have to heat them Somebody was nice enough to use the wrong Allen uh, head the last time, strip this bolt out just a little bit, uh, but we did go ahead and beat that in there with a hammer, so it will come off. Come off-ish. So we had to go back, just some hand tools, try to grunt this thing off. Sometimes you will have to take a pry bar. We're gonna see if we can depress the caliper a little bit more. This is one of the calipers that was seized completely. So that may not go anymore. It is not gonna go anymore. This brake job is going to be a challenge, but it's a good one to show. So you can see the rust. I mean, it's a pretty bad shape. Again, we are doing a full brake job. You can see the pads. These pads do have some life left on them, but it's not the original pads. The rotor has worn beyond the limit. Everything is froze up. So we'll be putting new rotors, new calipers, new pads. And we're gonna look at these pins. Well, often these are overlooked. These pins have some heavy wear marks on here where the caliper slides back and forth. So we're gonna end up having to replace the guide pins on here as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the cap, um, drain any oil that it may or may not have in there. We'll leave a link to a tool similar to this one. These are hard to get. I don't, I don't think you can find these online, but I have one that does work just fine that we can link. Um, if your caps are in good shape, be careful with them. Try to reuse them. We are replacing these caps. They're very cloudy. They're old. You can't see your fluid levels in them anymore. 
you can see the last time that was changed was probably when they discovered oil for the first time, I'm thinking. So this may be original oil. We'll probably save this and put it in our uh, trailer repair museum. In the Dexter 10K setup, it uses two nuts that jam together. It also uses this locking washer. So you have to find the tabs, as you can see here. We're gonna have to stand those tabs up. Sometimes it may have one. Sometimes it may have all, depending on who worked on it before or if it's factory. This is gonna have at least two that I can see. If you have a socket, you can use a socket to release this and to tighten them back. That's how normally we would do it. I'm gonna show you a different method because most people are not gonna have a socket this big without having to go out and buy one. If you have a chisel um, or a punch, you can simply take that to loosen pressure. The outside one normally is going to be the tightest. Now, if you do it with a chisel, you'll see a little sharp mark where the chisel cut into a little bit. That's perfectly okay. The only issue with that being when you go to retighten this, be aware of that because you can cut your finger on it. You may want to buff it off uh, with a grinder or file it down. So move the outer nut, the inner tang washer, and see how that one's, that, that's supposed to be loose. Maybe not quite that loose. I'm sure this does have some bearing wear on it. But once we get the inner nut off, there'll be a washer right behind that, or there should be a washer right behind that. Every once in a while, we'll find one that has nothing. So that's the washer. Then you have your outer bearing. Sometimes that'll go ahead and come on out. It's perfectly fine to do that. Now at this point, it's ready to be removed. Now that being said, sometimes these things will just completely come off. Sometimes the seal is stuck on the spindle um, and, and you will have to persuade it to get it off. Hopefully for the video, this one comes off easy. If you notice that I'm sweating profusely on here and you think, why is that guy sweating so much? Well, first and foremost, because I'm fat, I'm out of shape and I'm a sweater. The second thing is my wife made me turn off the fan so you could hear me. So I'm taking one for the team. So you better click to subscribe to help me out. Maybe we'll get us a quiet fan. Maybe like one of the fancy ones that makes no noise. You see that? She ain't coming off easy, boy. Oh, something else to check for. It is Black Widow season. All these spider webs, make sure there's not a black a widow in there to bite you. Let's see if we got one. It looks like one has been in there, but I'm not seeing one. So get rid of the black widows. You can see this dude is nasty. Um, so it definitely needs a little love. We're going to take this old rotor off, split it, separate it from the hub assembly. Off camera, I am gonna lubricate this so we may can get the nuts off of it today. Now we have all the nuts loose from the studs. We're gonna separate the rotor from the hub using just tap it with a hammer. Just kind of work your way around. See it cracking from all the dirt. Should be good enough. Good enough ish. So now we have the hub and rotor separated. So now you can see the seal and the inner bearing. Sometimes these seals are a booger to get out. We usually use a big bar like this. You can use a heel bar. Um, if you don't have those available, another method you can use is go from the inside, use a hammer in, preferably one that's got a hardwood, like a hickory handle, put it up against the bearing, and then just start tapping it out. Uh, just note, there is a very good chance you're gonna damage the bearing doing that. Um, this one, we could do that. I know these bearings are not gonna be any good, as old as they are. I'm gonna try to get it out with a pry bar. Just kind of work your way around. And you could also put this in a vise, if that would help. Have somebody help you hold it. This dude is in there. So let's go the hammer method. If you're gonna use a hammer, um, you're gonna get it nasty. So my advice on that is, is to not use your hammer. Go borrow somebody else's. So Jesus, if you're watching, I've got your hammer, buddy. I'm not gonna use mine because then I had to clean mine, so. She's not a coming. And there we have it. We have one stuck seal and one nasty bearing. That'll go in the parts pile. I can tell you, whoever put this seal in the last time did not use the proper method and they smashed it in there way too far. And that's why it was so hard to get out. The seal is deformed. It looks like it's probably even been riding up against the bearings. We've got the new rotor installed on the old hub after we got the hub out of the parts washer. 
We've also installed the inner bearing and the inner seal. Our oil bath hubs, we only use national seals on there, so that's ready to go. We've cleaned up the spindle. Always check the spindle to make sure, you know, if, you've, if you haven't owned this trailer from the beginning, uh, make sure nobody has lost the bearing in the past, they've done any grinding or anything on the spindle that may warrant having to replace the axle. So we're gonna lubricate it. Your oil is good for your skin, no matter what they tell you. Don't let them tell you otherwise. It'll give you skin like a princess. My wife's giving me that look right now. Maybe that's too far. So now we're gonna install it. If you have an extra set of hands, it's good to use two people to do this so you don't damage the, the seal. I don't have an extra set of hands, so we're just gonna have to be easy with it. This weighs about 60 pounds. And just take your time, put the seal on to make sure that you don't damage it. So now we're gonna install the outer bearing. We're gonna lube it up. Now that we got the inner bearing, we're gonna start with putting the washer, the inner nut. This is the nut that you will set your load on the bearing. The second nut is just the jam nut that keeps them together. As I showed in the beginning of the video, using the chisel to take this out, you can, if you're experienced, use the chisel to tighten this, to set the preload. Unless you're experienced, I'm not gonna recommend that, so I'm not going to show that. If you're experienced, you're gonna know how to do that already. Use the chisel to get your nut out if you don't have a socket. Take your nut to the local parts store or tool supplier, buy you an axle nut. They're not super expensive. The one we have goes on a three-quarter ratchet. You don't have to have a three-quarter ratchet. You can adapt it down to a half inch. Uh, you may be able to find one with a half inch. We just use this ratchet. I've had this ratchet since I was about 15 years old, and we just leave it on here, and we use it all the time. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to set the uh, load on the bearing. It's the same process we'd use for a smaller setup. We're just gonna do it on here too. So you're gonna spin counterclockwise while tightening the nut down. You're gonna bottom it out, then you're gonna full turn. Relieve the pressure. You're gonna bottom all the way back down again without spinning the hub. Then you're gonna back it off, you know, a quarter to three eighths of a turn. Now, I do see some that come in that are missing this. This is super important. This is the Tang washer. This locks the inner nut and the outer nut together so that this can't move. So when you place this on, you have to bend these tabs down. It'd be hard to bend them right now. So take your outer nut, go ahead and put that on and just get it snug. Don't tighten it all the way down yet. You're just gonna use that to hold that Tang washer in place and make your life a little easier. So now we're gonna just bend that down. You can bend it down a couple places. You can bend it down three places. It, you know, as long as you got a couple, you'll be fine. Try to do it on the flattest part of the nut possible. Now we can lock the jam nut down. We're going to lock it in place. So just take that, pry it out. Okay, now your bearings are set. Your nut is set and it's jammed in and we're ready to put the cap on. This is a new cap. We put a little bit of oil on here. These do have a torque recommendation on there that you can read on the cap. I'm gonna use a tool that we have to install that. And as I said earlier, we will leave a link in the video below to show a tool similar to this. So the way I like to do it is get it hand tight, get it snug. Then I like to take this end of a hammer, something that's soft, and just give it a little tap so it's snug. Do not over tighten it because you will break it. Do not under tighten it because it will come loose. Once you've installed this, you need to check this from time to time to make sure it's not loose. If you see that it's wet, it's either loose or the seal is leaking. The other thing I wanna cover real quick before we move on to the brake, when you go to fill this with the proper fluid, do not fill it until it runs out of the top. I see people trying to fill it and push the plug in. That's too much liquid. It will blow it out or blow it out the seal in the rear. On this cap, it only goes to the bottom of this line. So no matter where that's at, where it says oil level right there. So basically on this nut, this cap setup, it's gonna be right here in the bottom of this hex nut. 8Ks are a little different. They use a little bit more oil in them. So just don't overfill it and don't underfill it. What you wanna do here is put some, put some oil in it, spin it and let it set, and then come back and check it before you, before you finish off and then uh, top it off if need be. We're not gonna fill it right now. We're gonna wait until I got all the rest of them done and fill them all together. So let's move on to the brakes. For a more in-depth video on the oil caps, um, some maintenance issues and some upgraded, upgraded caps that are available, um, see our video, we'll leave a li link in the description below. This piece here is what holds the caliper on. It's called the anchor yoke assembly. 
inside this, you'll see this groove. That should have an O-ring. There's one there, one in the back. Then up at the top, there's the same piece up here that's got a little piece of an O-ring in it. Can't see it, but you need to clean those out, blow them out, use some brake cleaner, um, and reinstall some new O-rings there that will come with your brake pad kit. Um, that just helps the pin as it goes back and forth not to wear out, keeps it from being metal to metal on there. When you install that, we'll cover that here in a minute, we'll show it. You also need to use uh, brake caliper grease in there. Inside the caliper is also a groove that takes an O-ring as well. If you're replacing it with a new caliper like we are today, it's gonna to come with the new O-rings already in it. So you can hang on to your extra ones for that. So now we're gonna take the brake caliper off. You have a brake bleeder screw and you have the brake line. I already did loosen this one because it is super tight. This time of the year, especially here in our area, if you're working up underneath treaders, especially in hubs, brake assemblies, and or calipers, you will find you some little friends. Um, we got Black Widow in there that I just helped out with some uh, sleepy juice. Take precautionary measures and wear some gloves. Once you remove that, before you even think about putting the new caliper on, this system needs to be completely flushed. So you need to go to the front of the trailer where the hydraulic, electric over hydraulic pump is that we showed in the beginning of the video. Disconnect the line there and blow compressed air that's been regulated down to lower pressure. Blow all the fluid out of here, then spray some brake cleaner in here to flush the system out. It needs to be completely clean and it should have good flow come out. So you need to do that on all four before you put the new caliper on it. If you've got steel lines on here and you got a bunch of rush coming out, you may have to replace the steel lines. So now we're gonna talk about pricing for these components. Depending on what part of the country you're at, depending on how honest your shop is, or depending on what your shop can source and stock, there can be a huge difference in between the pricing. Now something we hear a lot is when somebody comes up, I don't want any of those import parts, I want USA made only. I'm not gonna get into that debate today because we'll be here all day, but I will tell you, just because it's in a name brand box, just because it's from a reputable manufacturer, does not mean that it's not an import part. Say what? We're gonna look at these two calipers. You look at these two and see if you can tell the difference. Caliper one. Let's go to caliper two. On these two calipers, one is supplied by the manufacturer, one is boxed as an import. The price difference is manufacturer supplied caliper is about $430. The import supplied caliper is $144. So $430 compared to $144. But here's what I am going to tell you. Both of these calipers are import. Wow. I have a pretty good idea that both of these calipers are also coming from the same root supplier, but there's a huge price difference in. So imagine doing all four of these at 144 compared to all four of these at 430. So that's the decision you have to make whether or not you want to buy import or not. We're honest with our customers. I just want to be upfront. I'm going to cover up the manufacturer on here. This is a, a manufacturer's part that is supplied by the manufacturer that I'm not going to say who it is, but I'm going to zoom in on something to show you and let you decide whether it's an import part or a USA made part. So we're going to zoom in right here at the tip of my finger. What do you think, import or non-import? These rotors, I see them ranging from about $100 a piece to about $275 to $300 a piece. Same thing with the brake pads on here. Uh, manufacturer supplied two brake pads will cost you on average $186. So that's $186 per wheel times four if you're doing a brake job. The boxed import pad is gonna cost you $64 and some change per axle. $186 per wheel, $64 per axle. You look at them. You tell me which one's the import, which one's not the import. I'm not gonna tell you on this one, let you decide that for yourself. If you, if you call a shop and there's a huge price difference on a brake job like this, that doesn't mean the shop is being dishonest. There's many times that I cannot get the cheaper caliper that I have to buy from a different source. It's almost four times the price, just the way it is. The other thing we talked about was the caliper pin bolts. We're gonna cover that. This is what a new bolt looks like. This is the bolts that we pulled out. The pricing on these, I see these anywhere from $15 to $20 a set to over $100 a set for two bolts and two nuts. So if you're going to a shop, you know, just, just note that. That doesn't necessarily mean the shop's being dishonest. Now, whether or not everybody else is being honest, that's for you to decide, not for me. Um, but luckily we do have parts that are cheaper for our customers. So we're gonna save him, we're gonna save him about two grand on this job. 
Um, and, and with the way things are right now, I mean, that's a lot of money. Um, that's, that's a huge difference in this brake job. Okay, we are ready to put the caliper and the brake pads back in. One thing to remember, be sure not to put the brake pads in reverse. They will fit either way. This way you'll be metal to metal. You will stop on a dime until you ruin the rotor. So put them in that way. Make sure the, the wearable pad service is uh, contacting the rotor itself. This uh, brake pad set for this full axle, it does come with this handy dandy little tool. It's like a bullet that helps guide that through there to line your holes up. So we're gonna put a little caliper grease on here. I've already put some on. Just a thin coat, doesn't need much, just something to help lubricate the O-rings. You'll also need the anti-rattle spring. Uh, this brake pad set comes with these. Some sets don't, you have to buy these um, individually. Put these on, that just keeps the brake from chattering when going down the road so it doesn't drive you nuts. All right now that we've got both caliper pins in, we're gonna put the lock nut on the back, just tighten it down all the way until it's tight. Then you'll put your bleeder screw in at the top. Go ahead and tighten it all the way down to start with. And you hook your line back up. After you do that, you need to refill it full of brake fluid. You're gonna to have to bleed the system. There's two ways to do that. You can have somebody engage the brake. While they're doing that, they're also gonna to have to keep an eye on the fluid level in the pump. You're gonna get pressure on the brake then you're gonna bleed the bleeder off until you get just fluid coming out. No air, fluid only. If you do it this way, it will make a huge mess. It's gonna spray fluid up. I would recommend getting a piece of tubing or vacuum line that will fit over that, that you can catch it in a bowl so you're not making a mess all over the place. This is the, the vacuum bleeder that we use. There's some other ones out there that are probably gonna be cheaper than this. I'll see if I can find a couple options for some links. Uh, we use ours every day. This one here is probably seven, eight years old. Uh, the way it goes, it goes right on top of the brake bleeder. You will crack the bleeder open, hook this to an air hose, depress the trigger, and it will pull a vacuum and catch it in this reservoir here. And you'll just watch it until you have no bubbles coming through it. You only have clean fluid. Uh, so this is a way that you can do it by yourself. You can have this going while you're keeping a check on the fluid level in the pump. Once you get the air out of it, close your bleeder screw and you're good to go. I always start with the farthest caliper from the front of the trailer because that's gonna be the place that's gonna have the most air. So I start there, then I'll go around and check the other three. Once you get this bled, it's ready to put your tire and uh, wheel back on and uh, ready to put this thing back in service. I hope this video was helpful on this 10K hydraulic disc brake assembly. I hope you learned some things. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'd like to go back to the pricing on this. Just don't be surprised on a brake job like this where we discuss the difference in parts as far as pricing. And just remember, just because they're expensive at a different shop compared to, you know, if you've shopped around, doesn't mean that they're taking advantage of you. Their supplier may not have a good deal on part. This brake job can vary on the low end about $2,658, that's service included. On the high end, about $4,537.67. That's a huge difference. Same brake job, some of the parts are the same exact part, just for a different supplier. Uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, do your homework on it. Make sure the shop you're using is doing their homework on it. If you will maintain this brake system here, check it out for time to time, you should get years of service out of this. I have some guys that are getting less than a year of service out of that. So if you're having to drop two to $5,000 once a year for a brake job, that's gonna be pretty costly to try to make a living whatever kind of business you're doing. Thank you for watching our videos. If you wanna get an update on our new and upcoming videos, click the subscribe on that and we'll see you in the next one.